Popular moves by the UK. The weather rained for a time, then turning chilly with blustery showers, a high of 13 degrees. LBC Travel, I'm Joanne Webb. For those who need to make a journey this morning, one lane is closed on the M20 westbound just after Junction 4 at Laybourne. It's after an accident and there are delays of about four miles on the approach. Still very busy on the A2 westbound from the Cobham services to the Bean Interchange after the overnight roadworks but they've now finally finished. The Victoria Embankment is closed northbound from Embankment Tube Station up to Waterloo Bridge. On the train, southeastern and Thameslink services can't run westbound between Raynham and Rochester. That's following a signal failure and on the underground there are severe delays on the central and district lines and minor delays on the Hammersmith and City. This is LBC. However you're celebrating. Now 0345 6060 973 LBC. Every front door. at breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Ten minutes before eight is the time. They'll come back to our conversation concerning the concerns by some. Some that the restrictions or COVID controls could last until 2022. Uh, But let's turn to a member of the Cabinet who will be talking in a moment about millions of pounds being made available for vulnerable families. And we'll get more from Housing Secretary Robert Jenrick on that in just a second. He joins me now. Can I just ask you, this this worry or fear even that COVID controls could last until 2022, do you think they will? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. 
Well, the Prime Minister has already set out the roadmap, which sets out a cautious reopening of the economy and society, which we hope and expect to be followed through and to be an irreversible change back to a more normal way of, of living. So yeah. we don't see there being a need for longer term restrictions beyond that. We hope that the vast majority of the restrictions that we've been living through All will right. be able to be eased uh, by the 21st of June. So when when your colleague uh, said in the House of Commons yesterday, we'll be back debating this in October, he was wrong. That isn't the expectation of the government. No, uh, we want to move through the roadmap and at the moment, thanks to the success of the vaccination programme, we're on course to do just that. Thank you for that. Let's talk about this uh, programme then for vulnerable families. What is it and how much money is behind it? And I always have to ask this, is it new money? Housing Secretary. Yes, well, we've had a programme now for many years, which uh, people will be familiar with, called Trouble Families, which has supported about 400,000 families in difficult situations to have the wraparound care of the state to uh, assess and uh, improve their life chances. And as we come out of COVID, we've felt that it was even more important that we provided that sort of level of support. And so we're providing £165 million to support 69,000 families. They're going to be given individual care workers. And, and this is new money, is it, Secretary of State? Sorry to interrupt. This is new money, is it? It's not been promised before. No, it's, it's an extension of the, the programme that we've had for many years. So right. it's building on the programme. But it's, so we have uh, heard this, this money before. Well, I, this, is, this is a programme that's existed for a, a number of years, but we're now moving forward with it. What we want to do is ensure that it supports about 69,000 families across the country. And what's different with this programme to many others is that it really treats the family as a whole unit. It looks at the needs of the whole family in the round. It provides them with individual caseworkers who meet them in their home and look at everything from mental health, children's uh, educational performance, uh, health needs, housing. Uh, and the results have been fantastic in recent years. It's led to fewer children being taken uh, into care. It's ensured that more children are in school, fewer people are claiming job seekers allowance because more parents are in the workplace. So it really is one of the most successful right. government interventions to try to support families. And as we come out of the pandemic, when so many families have been uh, in such a difficult period, I think it's going to prove to be more important than ever. All right. While I have the benefit of you on the line, a couple of other matters. Is the government now confident the EU will not be introducing export vans, bans on vaccines or parts of vaccines? Well, we're going to keep working with them, uh, cooperating and discussing these issues with them. We very much hope that's the case. We want the EU to stick to the agreement that we had earlier in the year that contractual relationships and arrangements will be honoured. It isn't in anyone's interest to pull up the drawbridge and damage the very complex and interconnected international supply chains of vaccines. And that is the message that the Prime Minister has continually delivered to his counterparts in the EU. OK, so we're strong on that message. One that does seem to change a bit is pub passports. What do you understand the situation to be when those with gardens, of course, reopen in, what, a couple of weeks' time and then others follow a month or so later. Do we need a passport? No, there's no immediate plan. Uh, we're looking through a wide range of options in the longer term um, once the whole country has been vaccinated. And there are a number of complex issues that need to be worked through, the practicalities, the moral and ethical issues that are raised. And no decision has been been taken on that. Um, we're also looking at international certification, and that is a different question, because if other countries choose to pursue that route, then clearly we don't want our citizens to be disadvantaged. But again, a complex piece of work is ongoing across government, and we're going to be saying more on it in the coming weeks. All right. And lastly, a story that's gained front page coverage in some newspapers this morning. Should a teacher have been suspended for showing children a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad? Well, I don't know exactly what was said or done by that teacher, and it's right that the school should consider that. The Department for Education is in conversation with the school. Well, and it's not considered. I'm, I'm sorry to talk over you, sir, but it's not, the teacher has been suspended, so there's no consideration. It's been done. Well, the and school, the should the teacher is, have been suspended? 
the school is looking into the issue and without knowing exactly what happened in the classroom, it's difficult for me to comment with confidence. But what I can say, two things. Firstly, this is a country based on free speech and teachers should be able to tackle difficult and controversial issues in the classroom and issues shouldn't be censored. And secondly, and most importantly, it's absolutely unacceptable for teachers and staff in our schools to be threatened or intimidated. We need to ensure that there is tolerance and respect, but I was troubled by the scenes I saw outside the school gates in Batley. We don't want to see those coming to work in our schools, children or parents feeling threatened or intimidated when they're coming into school just because a difficult issue has been tackled in the classroom. And of course it's also a great concern, the reports that the uh, the, uh, teacher at the heart of this is having police protection, Secretary of State. Yes, I was very troubled to hear that. Of course, that's uh, reminiscent of the scenes that we saw in France earlier uh, in the year. We don't want to go down that route. Of course, a teacher shouldn't have to go into hiding in this country uh, because of something they may have done or said in the classroom. We need a, an atmosphere of respect and tolerance, and we need to be able to ensure that our teachers feel free to tackle difficult and complex issues. So I would... I would strongly urge those people who have um, taken to the streets, who have protested outside the school, to dial this down and to work with the school in a productive and sensible way. And finally, we often talk about housing matters, Secretary of State, but also local government is on your brief. A word on the news that householders in more than 100 districts will receive average bills of more than £2,000 next week, some town halls putting up council tax by 11 times the rate of inflation. Secretary of State. Yes, well, we've given councils the flexibility to increase council tax uh, if they wish, but it's a decision for them and members of the public will have to hold them to account for that at the ballot box. There are some uh, very worrying examples, like the Mayor of London, for example, who's hiked his mayoral precept by 10%. That seems completely unacceptable. Councils need to balance the delivery of good public services with the needs of their residents in a particularly challenging economic period. For the government, we've given billions of pounds to local authorities to make sure that they've got the money they need to get through the COVID-19 pandemic. And we've given them, in fact, more money than they've told us that they spent uh, on that issue. So that certainly shouldn't be a reason why they're hiking people's bills. Grateful for your time today. Thank you. Housing and Communities and Local Government Secretary Robert Jenrick appearing here on LBC. Uh, Let's come back to our conversation about the gas strikes. Darren is in Bromley. Darren, I've only got about a minute. Tell me what you want to tell me. Good morning. Hi, Andy. Good morning. Thank you for letting us on again. Not at all. Uh, I just wanted to say that, that there has been some really underhand tactics used by British Gas. We've had inducement after inducement. If we signed by midday yesterday, there'd have been a £2,000 payback paid on the 1st of April and another 2500 paid in December, as well as an ongoing bonus scheme worth £2,000 a year from 2023. If you didn't sign by midday yesterday, you've lost all of that. 